Now let's graph the logarithmic functions given by uh, our axis. So to graph the first function logarithm of x minus 1 to the base 6 minus 5, let's graph the basic logarithmic function. Let's say we're graphing log of uh, x to the base 6. So log of x to the base 6 will have a point of inflex inflection at the x-intercept, which is at 0 and 1. And the vertical asymptote of our function will always be one unit to the left of the point of inflection. And the slant asymptote is going to be y equals x. So it's always one unit going up. So this is the slant asymptote. So once we have established our basic graph of the logarithmic function, which is log of x to the base 6. Now we can proceed with the translation of our function. So let's go ahead and translate the function. So since we have x minus 1, it means we're going to move one unit to the right and then five units going down. So we have a point of inflection at this point, which is a 2, 5. And at 2, 5, we know that the vertical asymptote will move one unit to the right so this is our new vertical asymptote and the vertical asymptote or slant asymptote would be starting at 1 5 and now that we have our asymptotes the graph of logarithm of x minus 1 to the base 6 minus 5 would be this graph so this is the graph of our function. So when you're graphing logarithmic function, always graph the basic graph of the function so you will see its translation. So for problem number two, we will graph our basic log of x graph. So this is our point of inflection and the vertical asymptote and the slant asymptote. So this is the asymptote that we cannot cross and the slant asymptote that will guide us the shape of our logarithmic graph. Again, this is now our log of x base 5. So notice that the base is um, not going to change the behavior of our graph that much, but the constants will affect our graph of the logarithmic function. So let's go ahead and uh, find the asymptotes of our translation. We have x minus 1, so from the point of inflection from the original function, 1 to the right and 3 going up. So 1, 2, 3. So this is now our new point of inflection. This is our vertical asymptote and the slant asymptote. And the function is graph like so. And that's the graph of log of x minus 1 to the base 5 plus 3. Now for the third graph, again, let's go ahead and graph the basic log function with a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 and slant asymptote at y equals x. So the base is still not going to affect our uh, basic graph. So let's now work with our translation. Minus 3, x minus 3, so 1, 2, 3, and then 5. So it's gonna be here. This is our point of inflection. So our vertical asymptote is one unit to the left of the point of inflection. And our slant asymptote would be here. It's always one unit uh, from the top of our point of inflection. So this would be our graph for x minus 3 to the base 6 minus 5. Now for the next three function, so again, let's graph log of x And the translation would be 1 to the right and 3 up. Vertical asymptote. 
and the slant asymptote. And the graph of our function. So make sure that you're not going to cross the asymptotes that you have drawn so that you'll be able to sketch the graph of logarithmic accurately. Now for problem number five, So I always graph my log of x to give me a guide of my function. So when I translate it, plus 1, it's not too confusing. So 1 to the um, left this time because we have x plus 1, and then minus 4, down 4. Vertical asymptote and the slant asymptote. and the graph of our function. So this function for the last one would be at 0, 1 with a vertical asymptote and slant asymptote. The translation of our function will be plus 1, plus 1, and up one and this will be our vertical asymptote and the slant asymptote now to uh, identify the domain and the range of our logarithmic graph we can start with uh, Problem number one, we're going to write the domain. The domain of graph one would be um, all real numbers um, such that x, the vertical asymptote start at one, is greater than one. And the range would be it's continuously going or increasing up and down so it will be all real numbers and for problem number two the domain would be it'll start at all real numbers such that x is greater than one because our vertical asymptote is at x equal to one and uh, our range would be still all real numbers and the domain of our second graph this time it will start at 3 so it will be all real numbers such that x is greater than 3 1 2 3 and it will be all real numbers for our range of values and for the other three graphs, the domain would start at x, all real numbers such that x is greater than 1, and range would be still all real numbers because it's continually going up to the positive infinity. And domain, this time it's at negative 1 because that's our vertical asymptote. So the domain of the function would be all real numbers such that x is greater than negative 1. And the range of values would be all real numbers. And for the last function, the domain is at negative 1, which is the vertical asymptote. So it will be all real numbers such that x is greater than negative 1. And the range would still be all real numbers. So this is how we analyze and graph the function or logarithmic function using the translations from its um, original function or basic function of log of x.